An officer has been killed in the line of duty. Maybe the officer was chasing down an armed criminal. Maybe someone opened fire during a routine traffic stop. Maybe the officer was shot trying to stop a robbery. If you're like most of us, when you hear about an officer being killed, you think of gunfire. And that's natural. From 2000 to 2009, we saw an average of 57 law enforcement officers die every year from firearm-related incidents in the U.S. In 2010, there were 61 deaths. In 2011, that number rose to 68, making gunfire the leading cause of death that year. But there is a bigger threat out there, one that many officers ignore. In the 13 years before 2011, gunfire was not the leading cause of death among law enforcement officers. The leading cause of death was traffic related, with a significant portion of those deaths being the result of automobile crashes. Far too often, officers who are otherwise conscientious about safety don't think about what might happen if they're in an automobile crash. They're thinking about the job. Their minds want to be alert and ready to respond quickly. They're rushing to the aid of fellow officers. And they're focused on protecting citizens. They forget. You forget. You forget that you are only human. You forget that you have a family who needs you. You forget that while you might be an excellent driver, you're not in control of all the drivers around you. You might even think that for the good of the job, it's okay not to wear your seatbelt. But if you're thinking that, you're wrong, dead wrong. Let's look at some of the facts. The research is in on seatbelts. It saves lives and reduces injuries, bar none. We know that. Seatbelts reduce serious crash-related injuries and death by 50%. Airbags provide additional protection, but they're no substitute for a seatbelt. In any kind of uh, a crash, especially a rollover type situation, when you're wearing the seatbelt, um, it's just going to keep you in, in place. The risk of death is five times greater if you're thrown from a vehicle than if you remain in it during a crash. Wearing a seatbelt is state law, it's city policy, and it's department policy. Despite these facts, there remains a culture among some members of law enforcement that discourages the use of seatbelts. However, all it takes is a short conversation with vehicular crimes investigators to know that when you cheat with your seatbelt, you're putting your life in unnecessary risk. Actually, after I came over to the um, vehicular crimes division, then you start seeing all these accidents and start seeing the importance of wearing that seatbelt. Well, when I started in the division, I think I, I thought the same way. It's not, the seatbelt's not that important. Once you see your first uh, ejection or you know rollover type situation like that, uh, your, your views will, will change real quickly. I used to be like, okay, I'm not going very far. It's not going to hurt. I, all right, I should be okay. But then you start seeing a lot of these stores and hear from these people that um, they were just planning on going to the store to pick up some ice cream. They never made it home. I've seen crashes that you would think somebody would have died as a result of just seeing the vehicle afterwards, but it, all occupants had their seatbelts on. Everybody was fine. No one was even transported, and I've seen some that were seemingly, you know, minor crashes where there were no seatbelts worn, and, and somebody's died off from that. So it's just the seatbelt can make all the difference. I have a zero tolerance on seatbelts. It's it's no different from wearing uh, your ballistic Kevlar. It's there for your personal safety and your protection. And as law enforcement officers, we shouldn't ignore the law. That seatbelt is just as big a life-saving tool as your pistol. You know what I mean? Because if it's going to keep you in that car, if you get in the event you are in an accident, then that's going to save your life. You really can't take any action unless you get there safely, you arrive safely, and you can get out of the car safely. Unfortunately, proven facts and eyewitness information isn't always enough to convince an officer to start wearing a seatbelt. Sometimes you have to experience it for yourself and hope that you, or whoever you care about, lives to tell the tale. 
Me and my partner basically um, attempted to pull a vehicle over for a simple traffic violation. Um, the guy refused to stop, and that what the uh, high speed chase ensued. We were, uh, I was on the warrant unit in the Northeast, and we were going to meet another unit to run our felony warrant. And as we were going to the unit, I, uh, they said, hey, you know, he's over here. I had no idea where we were. Uh, we turned on a dark road, still really didn't, wasn't familiar where, where I was. When I looked to see where he was at, the other car in front of me stopped to turn around, and I didn't see him. He lost control first. After he lost control, um, we went through the dust cloud. I then lost control. Um, as a result, we flipped over several times before landing in the ditch. I didn't have my seatbelt on, didn't have my vest on. I don't know what would have happened if that, if that seatbelt didn't keep me in that car. I woke up with hoses in my throat and, you know, not being able to talk and the halo around my head. Had I not had that seatbelt on, I don't think I'd be here talking to you guys. Not being able to move anything at all, you know, kind of a little freaked out. From 2000 to 2009, over 700 officers lost their lives in some type of traffic-related incident. In 2010, that number was 73. 16 were struck by a car. Six died in a motorcycle incident. One died in a bicycle accident. 50, well over half, died in an automobile crash. In 2011, when the IACP published their report on traffic-related line-of-duty deaths, they incorporated data collected by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, an analysis of 30 years' worth of collected crash data. That information highlighted a disturbing fact. Over 40% of U.S. law enforcement officers killed in automobile crashes were not wearing a seatbelt. This includes 64 officers between 2004 and 2008 alone. In Texas, five of the 13 officers killed statewide between 2007 and 2010 were unbuckled. 40%. That's a lot of unnecessary risks. So why weren't they wearing their seatbelts? I think there's a perception of, you know, you can get out of a vehicle faster if, if you're in a pursuit or you need to jump out of a vehicle quickly. Oh, they restrict me from getting out of the car, chasing someone down. I can't jump out fast enough. Uh, you know, my radio or my gun may get uh, hung up in the seat belt. It's that mentality, you get out there and you want to run and gun and chase everybody down. And then you want to think that, all right, maybe the seat belt will slow me down. I know when it's hot and you have your vest on, putting a seatbelt on sometimes, you know, takes the comfortable, you know, feeling out of, you know, being in the police car. You know, officers are creatures of habit. You know, we get in the car, we don't think about it. You know, especially if we gotta go to a call or we go into assistant of the officer, we put that uniform on, we forget that we're humans. We forget that we have families. If we got to cut you out of the car, or we got to take your picture in the car with your body covered up uh, with a blanket or a sheet, then you, you really didn't help at all. If we have an already dangerous job, there's no need to add more to it by not wearing the seatbelt. I mean, I think that you might as well uh, just make it as safe as possible in, in that regard. Actually, you hurt our efforts because now we got to use additional resources to either get you out of the car and get you transported to the hospital or do a death investigation and notify your family. Your number one thing every day you go to work is to go home. And you know what, for me, if me keeping my seatbelt on is going to make it so I can go home at night and see my family, then that's one more thing I'm going to make sure I do. Because we don't know, we can't control the variables in this job. I don't know when I'm gonna get in a shootout. I don't know when I'm gonna get in an accident. I don't know when these things are gonna happen to where I gotta put my life on the line. So since I don't know, I have to be prepared. 
and I have to use all my safety equipment. If an officer truly is um, officer safety minded, then the first thing they'll do is put the seatbelt on. Had I not been wearing that seatbelt um, on the morning of my accident, I don't think I'd be here talking to you today. If I'd had the seatbelt on, I wouldn't have been in this condition. I would have still been hurt, but I wouldn't have been paralyzed. It's important to wear your seatbelt, not just because state law, city policy, and the chief of police is telling you, you must do so, but it's important to your family that no one has to knock on your family's door and give them bad news that you have been critically injured or killed. You owe it to your family to wear your seatbelt. When you choose not to wear your seatbelt, you're not just risking your life. There are other lives in the balance. What you tell your family, your spouse, your children. When your careless choice changes their lives forever.